This movie is produced by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, Directorate General of Research and Training, with the aim of contributing to the service quality of accommodation and food and beverage facilities of tourism sector by improving professional knowledge and skills of personnel working at the food preparation departments within the framework of national occupational standards. Freshly harvested produce from green fields. Tasty meals served to tables. And all the devotion and labor during the process. In accommodation facilities, food and beverage department is responsible for acquisition and storage of the food and beverage, preparation and presentation. In this movie, we're going to review the most important part of these stages, basics of food for cuisine attendance, rules to be regarded for workers' health, rules to be obliged during food preparation. The best place for team spirit is the kitchen. A good team means a good kitchen. If you wish, we can start with distinguishing people in the team. For operations to run smoothly in kitchen, occupational standards and definitions should be well known and distribution of work must be done correctly. In food and beverage departments, number of personnel is decided according to the size of the accommodation facility. For this, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, taking into consideration national and international occupational standards, prepared Tourism, Accommodation and Food and Beverage Services, National Occupation Standards based on a protocol with Vocational Qualifications Authority, and cooperation with the tourism sector to determine national qualifications. According to these standards, the fifth level kitchen executive plans and coordinates services in kitchen, inspects and guides subordinates to serve according to the facility standards and prepares a budget depending on the facility's budget and maximizes customer satisfaction by resolving or considering customer wishes. Fourth level chefs prepare standard prescriptions and menus, national, international and world kitchen soups and consomme, hot and cold sauces, pastry, meat and fisheries dishes, vegetable and legume dishes, olive oil dishes, rice pasta dishes, cold and hot tapas, salads, side dishes and desserts. Fourth level pastry cooks prepare pastries, pastry desserts, milk and chocolate puddings, cereal and fruit desserts, compote and stewed fruits, cakes and cake dressings according to menus and kitchen sanitation. Third level kebab chefs are responsible for preparing meatballs and kebab. Third level pita chefs are responsible for making the pita oven ready, preparing dough, pita toppings and side dishes ready, shaping the dough and baking the pita and serving. Third level doner kebab chefs are responsible for preparing the doner meat and doner itself. Second level kitchen personnel are responsible for carrying stuff related to kitchen, preparing supplies ready to be served, 
Preparing the buffet is in carrying stuff back to the kitchen. Also restocking the buffets, cleaning cold rooms, storage rooms and stock rooms and helping for the preparation of hot and cold servings and desserts. Second level scullery workers are responsible for cleaning the floor, ceiling, bench top, buffet, stock room, waste areas, washing the dishes, cleaning the supplies and tools and disposing wastes. Kitchen personnel are responsible for customers and workers' healthy diet, so they must be chosen from a group that keep tabs on today's technology and innovations, leading expert in their field, experienced in making menus and professionally trained. Kitchen personnel should keep good relationships with each other and other employees of the facility. To ensure the necessary hygiene in the kitchen, employees should pay attention to their personal care and personal hygiene. Physical health of the staff in the kitchen is also extremely important. Personnel should take medical examination before employment. Health status of personnel required in the process of examination should be performed and should be kept under control. Because germs easily get into nutrients, the staff with illness shouldn't work, the treatment process should be followed. It is necessary to learn whether the illness is infectious or not. As well as diseases, accidents require caution. To prevent possible accidents and ensure a safe work environment, procedures must be known well and performed. When it comes to a condition leading to an accident or requiring repair, immediately inform the responsible departments. During slicing machine cleaning, always pull the plug and use the safety lever on the detention of material to work together. Cutting tools are never sinned in kitchen sink full of water. Should be kept on a regular basis to keep blades in place. Safety rules have to be considered while cleaning meat mincing machine. Floors should be kept clean and dry. We must eliminate things that can cause stuck to fall. We shouldn't put too much on trays, should not carry over length items in case of falling off, should be careful while opening and closing the doors. We should use entrances and exits on the right direction and wear secure shoes. We should keep necessary kitchen tools on us, should not fill up pots too much with boiling liquid, shouldn't leave hot pot scripts turned outward. We should pay attention while putting the food into the hot oil, not forget to reduce the vapor pressure of cooking equipment before uncovering. Our hands should be dry when using electrical appliances. We should pull the plug or close the switch while using, repairing or cleaning electrical tools. Electrical appliances should be controlled on a regular basis we should put a sign indicating that the item is out of order. We should inform the technical service according to the procedures and we have to be careful not to use electric vehicles on the wet floor. Gas burners should be checked before turning on. Before we turn on the oven, we should keep the oven door slightly open. If pots pour, the gas should be checked. Before leaving the kitchen, we should control all the gas tabs. When we find troubled gas-powered equipment, we should inform the chef and immediate action should be taken when a gas leakage is felt. Gas leakage warning tools should be supplied in the kitchen. Electrical wiring and sockets shouldn't be overloaded with multiple electrical appliances. Appliances should be kept close to a plug. Too long extension cork shouldn't be used. The collected fat deposits in chimneys may cause fires. Thus, we should often check them. Fire extinguishing system and fire alarm system should be present in the kitchen and they should be checked regularly. 
Fire exits should be kept ready and unlocked. We shouldn't put goods in front of them. There should be warning signs leading to these exits. In addition, it is important to train staff on firefighting and evacuation. In addition, a first aid kit that contains the necessary materials must be supplied in every kitchen. Points of importance other than kitchen staff hygiene and safety is food hygiene and food safety. To ensure food safety in the kitchen, we should always keep the kitchen clean and tidy, and should wash kitchen sink, dicing boards, and food preparation containers with hot, soapy water. To prevent microorganisms spreading from one food to another, raw meat, eggs, chicken, and fisheries must be stored. Separate from other foods, and also raw and cooked species must be stored separately. Cooked food must be kept in closed pots. Vegetable and fruits should be washed, scrubbing in a clean dish. Food preparation and cooking containers must be washed with hot soapy water, and corroded containers must not be used. If canned foods have leakage or camber, they shouldn't be used either. Pasteurized milk products must be kept refrigerated. Eggshells must be clean and void of cracks. Eggs must be kept at five degrees Celsius in egg refrigerator. Fisheries must be kept refrigerated. Frozen food must be cooked after defrosting, and defrosting must be performed inside the refrigerator. Food must be cooked well and kept in appropriate temperature. Knowing the rules of nutrition as well as hygiene is very important for both our own and our customers' health. For a healthy nutrition, our bodies need adequate amounts of carbohydrates, lipids. Proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water. Let's remember what other things we should pay attention during the food preparation process. Whatever we are preparing, we should always be very careful about the cooking techniques. We should choose techniques. That protect vitamin and mineral values of the food and suitable for that particular type of food. For example, baking or grilling the sea bass is more appropriate than deep frying it. To prevent carcinogenic effects of high temperatures while grilling the meat, meat should be kept at least 15 centimeters from the heat source. We shouldn't forget that if all meat is not to be consumed at once, it should be separated into consumable amounts and deep frozen. We shouldn't refreeze the defrosted meat. Defrosting must be carried out at the lower levels of the refrigerator and cooked without delay. Likewise, chicken must be defrosted in the refrigerator and must be cooked within 12 hours after defrosting. And after cooking, it shouldn't be kept in room temperature more than half an hour. We can prepare meat broth to take the advantage of the high protein and mineral content of the meat wastes and bones. While preparing the meat broth, we can remove the blood clots. And bone pieces off them by boiling with cold water for three minutes, and then we can obtain the meat broth by boiling with cold water again. To flavor the meat broth, we can add vegetables and aromatic plants to the boiling water. We should be attentive to consume the fish in the right season, since there is no fat tissue under the skin of the fish. We should be careful about the cooking duration. 
we should weed out and clean the shellfish or non-shellfish very well before cooking. We should process the vegetables as washing, weeding out, chopping, and putting into water. But for the vegetables with roots, firstly, we should remove the roots and then wash them. We should not store the vegetables for long times after buying them. We should wash the vegetables by disinfecting them and by awaiting them in water with chlorine. We should wash them before chopping, and we should keep the surfaces that contact with knife and metal in minimum. We should cook the vegetables in boiling water in short times to make them keep their colors, since longer cooking duration will cause the deterioration of the shapes and loss of the nutrients in vegetables. We should be careful about the cooking durations. Cooking durations and methods differ according to the features of the vegetables. To prevent the vitamin loss, we shouldn't forget that we can cook the green vegetables without any additional water, and generally, we should cook the vegetables with minimum amount of water. We should avoid awaiting the cooked foods and heating them repeatedly. To prevent the vitamin loss, we should add lemon and vinegar just before eating. We should cook the frozen foods before they melt. We should consider the endurance of the vegetables when storing them. We should store strong vegetables such as onion and potatoes in dark and fresh environments. We shouldn't forget that while preparing a cream soup, the cooking should be completed before the addition of the cream, and after adding it, we should mix for a couple of times and take it off the burner. We should store the legume in dry and moisture-free environment. To increase the protein quality, we should consume them by mixing with cereals. To make it easier to digest the legume, whose digestion is a little hard, they should be appropriately prepared and cooked. After washing and weeding out the legume, we should make them wet with water at room temperature for 12 to 16 hours. We shouldn't cook them with hard and lime water. Instead, we should use soft water to prevent hardening. To prevent the loss of nutritional ingredients and to save time, we should cook them in pressure cooker or in steel cookers with double bases. We shouldn't use too high temperatures during cooking, since the previously added water hardens the legume and makes it difficult to remove the salt from human body. Salt should be added. Afterwards, we should keep the oils away from humidity and sunlight. We should be careful about choosing the appropriate oil for the foods. We should especially use natural extra virgin olive oil with hot and cold foods, and also with salads and sauces. In the fried foods, on the other hand, we should use Riviera olive oil if we are to use olive oil. We should be careful about. The frying pan has stick base and deep. Frying the foods in plenty of oil, keeping the temperature about 140 to 160 degrees Celsius, not putting the wet foods into oil before drying them. Frying the foods close to the service time. Frying the same types of foods together, and putting the fried foods into plates coated with paper towel for the absorption of the oil. We should add the salt to fried potatoes. After frying, side dishes are indispensable since they provide additional flavor to the foods. While preparing the side dishes, we should be careful about that they share the same features with foods to use the spices and herbs that give smell, flavor, and color compatible with the main dish, and to prepare the side dishes, especially the ones with potatoes, close to the meal time. While consuming the milk and milk-derived products, we should be careful about not to consume cheese made from raw milk and open milk. Instead, we should consume pasteurized or long-life milk. Those products do not require boiling before use. While making milk puddings, we should add sugar at the time close to the taking it off the burner, since the previous addition of sugar causes a decrease in the protein value. While cooking the milk puddings, since the milk will lose its proteins at high temperatures, we should cook it in a very short time and at average temperatures. While preparing cakes, we should be careful about the greasing. 
adding flour over the cake molds with a brush, putting greaseproof paper on the base of circular mold and setting the oven's temperature to 180 degrees Celsius and preheating. Since aged and cold egg affects the leavening of the cake, we should be careful about the eggs being fresh and kept at room temperature. We should definitely sift the flour and we should add the baking powder and vanilla by adding them to flour. Since wet, oily and floury environment will affect the swelling of the egg, we should be careful about the cleanliness and dryness of the egg cooker, mixer and spoons. We should put the cake dough into the cake mold and immediately put it into the oven. Since they'll be settling due to cool air pressure, we shouldn't open the oven in the first 25 minutes period after putting it into the oven. To check the cooking of the cake, we should use toothpicks or a knife with a sharp end and we should remove the cake from the mold by the help of a knife after getting it out of the oven and place it onto a wire grid to make it cool down without wetting. While preparing the cookies, flour, powdered sugar, baking powder and cacao should be sifted before the preparation of the dough. We should use high quality oil and we shouldn't remold the dough too much. We should certainly rest the dough and be careful about that. The working environment is cool. We should cook the cookie dough on the trays with greaseproof paper on the base with certain distances and we should not keep them in the oven's temperature after cooking. If we can combine the things that we learned up to now with our experiences, we can easily prepare a healthy menu appropriate for food and beverage principles. To prepare a menu appropriate for food and beverage principles, one needs knowledge and experience. To prepare an appropriate menu, one should know the expectations of the guests, the structures, tastes, shapes and smells and the seasonal features of the foods very well. While preparing a menu, we should be careful about the variety, color, cooking and dominant taste of the food and we should avoid making any material and food name repetitions. We should choose the appropriate side dish for the main dish and use vegetables and fruits in their right seasons. As you see, the kitchen is full of small but significant secrets from the vegetables and fruits to the working personnel, from the material that we use to the cooking method. However, only the flavor chiefs who are master of their domains can uncover this mystery. We are aware that cooking needs love, effort and devotion. We wish you to present the same efforts and devotion to yourself, to the people you love and to your kitchen.